This show is sponsored by Two Fat Lardies. Two Fat Lardies are a company that produce a wide range of rule sets for all periods and genres of rule gaming. So whether you want to lead a small number of men in the American Civil War, a company of troops and tanks during World War II, or even an entire army against the forces of Napoleon, then Two Fat Lardies could have the rules for you. Check them out at www.twofatlardies.co.uk Hello and welcome to another episode of the Meeples and Miniatures Miniature Review Show with me Neil Shuck. In today's show we're going to be looking at the first release from a new company from Italy. That company is Fireforge Games and they have just started by releasing a plastic box set of Teutonic Knights. Now they've been previewing these on the web for some time and uh, I think they've caused quite a stir. So... Let's immediately take a look at uh, what you get. So first off the box is a, uh, I think what can be expected is a a fairly standard kind of large size 20mm plastic box for uh, 12 miniatures. Same size of box as you might get for some of the Perry stuff or maybe Conquest Games Knights, that sort of thing. One thing I'll uh, immediately have noticed is that I think the box art is particularly striking. I always think that Teutonic Knights have a particular strong image anyway, you know, these they're very much kind of black on white, uh, very kind of stark image, you know, big great hounds and that sort of thing, which is kind of what they're known for. And so it's a very striking image, uh, but a particularly fine piece of box art. If you look on the back, it gives a brief overview of uh, what you get in the box. You see there's a nice picture in the one corner of um, a unit and also some teasers about what's coming next. More of that later. So what do you get in the box? Well, the box actually contains uh, three different sprues. First off, you get the standard knight sprue, which is what you can see here. You see the selection comes with four different knight bodies, uh, four different capes. You've got a selection in the middle, you've got a selection of hand weapons, four lances. On the right-hand side, you've got an option of uh, six different shields. And on the left-hand side, you have a select of helms, at uh, ten in total. And two of the sprues are like this. The third sprue is, uh, for want of a better phrase, a command sprue. Uh, here you see that the sprue on the whole is, is exactly the same. You've got the four bodies, the four capes, uh, the section of hand weapons, and the shields on the right-hand side. But if you look on the left, there you see there are a few differences. What we have here, there is some uh, flags to uh, be placed on the lances. You see there is a uh, a horn, uh, so if you wanted a, a, a musician, that's available there. You've also got a banner top um, of a, a crucifix, and that can be used to place on top of one of the lances. Uh, you can basically do a conversion with one of the lances and place the banner on top. That then becomes effectively a standard bearer. So they're the two different knight sprues you get. And you also get a horse sprue. You get six of these, so 12 horses in total. You see all the parts are actually interchangeable. You've got two left halves, two right halves, and three heads, two tails. Well, that's interchangeable. So going back to the knight body sprue again. As you notice, all the bodies are slightly different slightly differently. Again, all the capes are slightly different. So, um, with that and the amount of hand weapons involved as well, uh, you have a tremendous amount of interchangeability when it comes down to creating your knights. Pretty much everything is fully interchangeable. The one thing that is of note in these models are the shields. If you take a look at this shot of the shields, you'll see that uh, on the reverse side, three of the shields 
are completely blank. That's the bottom three. The top three actually have arms in them. Uh, this does make a, a, a bit of a difference when you're actually gluing the shields onto the models, as the the cut of the joints on these shields with the fixed arms in them does mean that uh, they only fit at particular angles. They're actually quite tight into the body. I think they're primarily designed for use in poses with the lance, but it does mean that you do have to be a little bit careful, especially with a couple of the capes. When we come to a, a particular shot later of putting some of the stuff together, you've got to be a bit careful as opposed to what body goes with what arm and what cape, because some things don't quite work. However, you have the option, you've got three kind of fairly tight to the body shields, and you've got an option of three open shields. If you look in the middle section where all the hand weapons are, there are three actually um, open arms for use, use with the open shields. They're a bit more forgiving as far as posing is concerned. They give you a little bit more room. But you, know, you, ha you have several different options. So that coupled with the number of heads that you get gives you, in this particular sprue, I mean pretty much everything fits together. Maybe a couple of things don't quite. But it gives you, in the region of just under 8,500 different poses. Which, for that sort of spur, is actually I mean, fairly impressive, to be honest. Uh, so, you know, lots of different options available. Add to that, if you look back at the horse spur, again, the horse spur, completely multi posed completely interchangeable. With all the different heads and body swaps, you actually get a total of 24 different horses that you can put together from this particular spur. Now, putting that together with the fact that you've got 8,500 knights, gives you somewhere in the region of a, a couple of hundred thousand different potential poses with combinations of different knights and different horses. So a fairly wide range of figures to go at, shall we say. So you know, lots of options available. Okay, and the last thing to note is, as well as all the uh, sprues you get, you actually get this sprue of bases as well. This configuration is becoming uh, fairly standard in an awful lot of the cavalry box sets that you'll see on the market uh, so you get a choice of single based and double based figures not particularly appropriate if you really like basing all your units on single bases but you know a lot of people these days like basing their their cavalry on double bases and then maybe having the odd single base for casualty removal that gives you this particular option this show is sponsored by Coat Arms Paints, a company that has been supporting wargamers by supplying paints for well over 20 years. Coat Arms produce a range of over 150 acrylic paints, and as part of this, they sell particularly grouped paint sets. Of particular interest, if you wanted to use them to paint these figures for Fireforge, you may want to look at the medieval paint set, and also their range of horse colours. You can find them all on the Coat Arms website. So, here's just a, a quick selection of knots that I've put together using one of the sprues. This is just a standard sprue, and you'll see here what I've done. Uh, I've used a couple of the lance options and a couple of the hand weapon options. I think you can immediately see the one thing that is uh, very apparent is the dynamic nature of these models. They really do like it. look like you know a, a force of knights charging along. It has a nice feel to it. OK, let's have a look at some of the knights individually. First off, this particular guy. Now, the one thing I would uh, immediately notice is that this particular lance arm I've used on this model is absolutely ideal for use as a standard bearer. So on the command sprue, there is that uh, big cross that you can use. I would definitely advise using this particular lance arm and then cutting the top off and applying the standard top to this. OK, we'll do a quick one around the, the model and you'll see how the whole thing connects together. Uh, a few little bits, little bits of flash and stuff, but generally this was you know, very quickly put together. I think you'll, you'll see that on the whole, you know, they're looking pretty good. One thing immediately of note, I suppose, is the fact that a little work will be required around the join of the horse head and the body. You say that, as you can see, there's quite an apparent line there, which will just need to be sorted out with a little bit of modelling putty. 
Moving on to the the second pose, this particular option has uh, a horse with a bare head. Again, you'll notice that uh, there is quite a pronounced line around the joint of the body and the head, which will need to be addressed. Generally, the pose looks okay. You'll notice on, on this particular shot, the, uh, the cape of the model does come over the arm. So uh, there was a little bit of work involved in just making sure that the arm is posed pretty correctly. But generally, that's looking, you know, it doesn't look too bad. One thing of note here, you'll notice, you'll notice here, this is a, a knight armed with a sword. All the bodies are moulded with swords and scabbards. So if you're going to be modelling a knight holding a sword, then actually one thing you do need to do would be to trim the sword hilt from the knight body. Uh, we'll see that again. You can't see that really here because it's blocked by a shield. But uh, if we go on to another knight, you'll see uh, that will be the case in a minute. Here we have another knight, different great helm again. Uh, this guy with this time with an axe. This again is using one of the uh, the shield arms that are that come with the arm attached. And you'll see that uh, uh, the shield is held fairly high. Gives a you know a, a nice pose, I think. On the whole, you see here here from the back. I'm especially impressed actually with the cloaks. I think once this is painted up, the cloaks will give a very nice kind of flowing look to them. Finally, we come to another option with a knight with a lance. This particular knight, I'm charging uh, with lance levelled. Big lances, as you can see. This particular one, the one thing I was a little bit uh, concerned about, potentially, is the use of the great helm. The helm almost looks a bit too big for the body. Uh, it's minor criticism, and certainly you could, prob you could you know, probably use an another different helm for this. It does look just... It's look with it from the side on uh, with with the pose. It just 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 slightly out of proportion. But other than that, I think the the models generally do look really nice and uh, are fantastically dynamic. This particular shot here gives a, a nice close up view of the chainmail detailing on the plastic. I think that's done really well. It remains to be seen. Obviously, I, I need to paint these to kind of uh, get the final view of, of how well they do under standard painting techniques, dry brushing or, or washing, what have you. But initial impressions certainly are that these would uh, these would operate really well. So overall impression uh, of this particular kit are, are very good. You say so you've got a tremendous amount of options involved. The horses generally, I think, look very dynamic, so it does look like, uh, you know, especially if you put them all together, uh, makes a wonderfully dynamic unit, uh, especially with the um, all the cloaks billowing out behind the riders and what have you. You potentially do have to be a little bit careful with the with, with the arms. As I say, they are pretty much fully mul uh, fully multi pose. Uh, which do which does mean that you do have to be just slightly careful in in the way you pose some of the figures, uh, otherwise they might look a bit strange, a bit awkward. But with everything you've got here, I mean, you do have the options to have a unit that is fully armed with hand weapons. Uh, you have enough to have a unit that is fully armed with lances. So yeah, there are twelve lances, and uh, I think especially once. <coughs> You take some of the lances and you start putting the pennants on the lances and stuff like that. I think that, I think that would look tremendous on a particular unit. So you, yeah, you could definitely make uh, two very different looking units: one with uh, one with all hand weapons, one with lances, if you really wanted to. But as I say, there, with over you know, a couple of hundred thousand different options in total, over yeah, over eight thousand ways of putting the knights together, you have plenty of choice in what you do. Unlike some box sets where they turn around and say, okay, they're multi pose, but they're not really, these pretty much are, and pretty much everything is interchangeable. As I said, you do have to be a bit careful with some of the combinations of weapon arms and capes. Uh, it, might, it might be uh, useful having a bit of a dry run beforehand when putting stuff together. I found even when putting uh, a couple of these particular models together that I had to change what shield arm I was putting together with the knight simply because it wouldn't quite fit properly uh, with the body and the cape I'd put on the particular figure. Obviously all these are kind of really in the raw plastic. Yeah, They need a, just a little bit of cleaning up. 
but obviously I think once you, know, once you get a uh, paint on them and stuff, I, um, I do think they will generally come out looking really well. And certainly if you see some of the, uh, you know, the, this painted picture, for example, of a full unit, uh, they do look tremendous. So, I personally think these uh, are really nice. One of my great loves in, in wargaming is just this mind's eye vision of a charge of mounted knights. Uh, you know, fully armoured knights. I mean, it's something that is captured again on the box art, if you like. And uh, it's something that really excites me about wargaming. And uh, I certainly think that this particular box set adds a lot to that. The Great Helms, which is something that the Teutonic Knights are kind of... Uh, it's, it's almost like their trademark, if you like. Some of them look uh, a little bit unlikely. But I think on the whole, it's, it's their real trademark. I really do think this is very good... Uh, first box set from uh, Fireforge. Now, in the UK, they're priced at £20. You can buy them direct from Fireforge Games, uh, and uh, they're €24. Euros. Now, the one thing of note is that at Salute this year, which is the 21st of April, they'll be coming out with two new box sets. One is of uh, Templar Knights, and the other is of Knight Sergeants. Now, these will be taking some of the horses and sprues that we see here adding a few extra bits and pieces to them different helmets and then you have uh, some un unarmoured bodies some un unarmoured horses and by the time you get these knights and the Templar knights and the sergeants together you have a, a, a hugely varied mounted force available to you those two boxes as I said are going to be available for initial release at Salute and I'm hoping to be able to review those in due course so, that's the Teutonic Knights from Fireforge Games. I personally would highly recommend them. This show is sponsored by Wargame Soldiers and Strategy magazine from Caravanserai Publishing. Wargame Soldiers and Strategy is a bi monthly ma magazine, especially for wargamers, and specialises in all sorts of articles to get your wargaming juices flowing, whether it be ideas for scenarios and campaigns, tips and guides for painting, or reviews of all the latest rule sets and models. You'll find everything you need at Wargame Soldiers and Strategy. Check them out on their website. Well, that's just about all we've got time for on this episode of the Meebles and Miniatures Miniature Review Show. I hope you found it both entertaining and useful, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care until next time. Happy gaming. Bye. <laughs>